<sighs> good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's take a moment and begin to merge with our bodies, dropping into our bodies, ourselves, dropping into our bodies, just merging in, becoming one, noticing what's up with the body right now, just dropping into it, having the intention to settle down fully, knowing that we have many bodies and that we typically are relating to life from the perspective of the mental body, that we can align it, drop the mental body inside, not align it, that was an incorrect word. We can drop the mental body down inside the physical body. People call it bringing body and mind, mind body movement, <laughs> but they're not really doing it for the most part, you see? But we have these skills that we've been blessed to be given that make it possible to actually do it. We all know how to merge, merging with our bodies. And sometimes when we do that, <laughs> we notice <laughs> things aren't so great right here. <laughs> <laughs> but it's simply good information. Then we become empowered to begin to change the situation. When we're so disconnected from our bodies that we can't feel what's going on, we're, we're par paralyzed and powerless to heal ourselves. So dropping into the bodies. Notice our breathing. <sighs> breathing equally into the left and right lung. Using the breath to bring body and mind together. Actually noticing the breathing. Usually we're breathing very shallowly in the tops of the lungs. Remember how far down the lungs go, so it can help to even put the hands on the belly or even on the lower back. The lungs go down to the waist. And so rather than putting our hands on the top of our chest, which encourages the shallow breathing, putting them on the bottom back of the lungs to encourage Breathing that will balance our energy bodies and draw us into our body. Does that make sense? And we can even overcompensate. So we can drop our hands down a little lower where there are no lungs. <laughs> Just to encourage, encourage us to actually breathe all the way down. If we're trying to breathe into our strategically placed hands, <laughs> we will maybe breathe through the bottom of our lungs. Does that make sense? They're funny, strategically placed hands. Is that helpful to anyone? Yes. Wasn't working, but so now we just, we use our hands basically like they're saying like target practice, you know, because we can aim for our hands with our breath. Does that make sense? So obviously, we could also grab the backs of our heels, for example. You see these things that would help us get ourselves more and more into the body. Who here ever has foot pains? It's an issue for me. I have to get in the body, get the soul in the body. Now. They say to continue that process of moving deeper and deeper into the body, <coughs> drawing our focus down to our feet. <coughs> wow. Drawing our focus down to the feet and to the backs of the heels, you know, the back. Whew. And keep going down. 
beneath the feet, but not dissociating. You see, just to give us a deeper target. Does that make sense? Still running right through the body itself, not bypassing. Does that make sense? Better. Yes, who notices that's continuing to improve? I do, yeah, for myself. There. And now keep going. With now some people are getting unbalanced, so find the hand uh, that is on the side that's less used, the less used lung, the less used hand. For me it's the left, but it just seems to be 50-50. And so whatever yours is, is what yours is. There's not a better or a worse way for it to be. And it's not gender related. That's just a weird story that everybody has. <laughs> there, keep going down on that lighter side, the side that we need the most. There. All the way down to the center of the planet. As if threading the needle. We don't want to bypass the center of the planet any more than we want to bypass the body, right? But we don't stop there. So keep going now, threading the needle down, down to the center of the solar system. You can thread that needle as well and continue on down, down into the center of the galaxy. And continue on down, down into the, there we go, into the center of the universe. Better, right? Let's keep our focus vertical as, as for just a moment more. And now way down deep, way down there at the center of the universe, begin to swish side to side, way down deep. Because we have earth chakras way down there, right? At the center of the universe. So let's just start not popping out of that focus of way down deep and start to swish side to side to clear <coughs> the earth cho <laughs> chakras. <coughs> <coughs> There's some muck down there, huh? Woohoo! <sighs> <laughs> Helpful information. <laughs> Woohoo! Better? Now they say uh, that we're focusing, we're forgetting that the typically the deepest muck is behind us at down there. Down there and behind where we are. There, yeah, better, right? Swishing that side to side, way, way, way down deep. Side to side, uh, pulsing the vortex, asking it to take away everything that's being released. Whew. The moment it's being released, whew, leaving us continually in clear space. And now, as this muck starts to leave, uh -huh. huh, drawing in the living water, ooh, drawing in the living waters. All the way down. Wow, that's a nice, beautiful wave. I'm going to ask the vortex to run on high right now, this entire weekend and however long afterward is appropriate. <sighs> also asking the living waters to flow on high right now, this entire weekend. Ooh, wow, and however long afterward is appropriate. <sighs> so now, friends, We'll begin to draw our focus up to the future chakra. And we'll create our energy cross, the cross of a vertical alignment and a horizontal alignment. We'll create the energy cross, not with the heart chakra as we typically do, but with the future chakra, because this is a class about working with the future. So we can start to swish the future chakra low and in back, just like we've been staying low and in back, but having the intention to be in our future chakra 
low and in back. Does that make sense? And start to swish it side to side. What a ginormous mess <coughs> that is, yes? Who notices that that's a big <coughs> cesspool? <laughs> or is it only the back of my future chakra that's a giant cesspool? <laughs> there we go. There we go. Pulsing the vortex, taking all of that away. Whew. Just to give us the conceptual words for it, the back of our future chakra is our past future. Now, for example, was our future 10 minutes ago or 10 years ago, right? Or when we were a child or in a past life, right? So all of our thoughts and projections about the future that we've made in the past, that's what we're clearing. Does that make sense? Thank goodness, because who among us hasn't thought, wow, since I messed this up, I'm going to be messing things up really badly and I'm incompetent or incapable. It's a story we all tell ourselves from time to time, right? Boy, I can't do this. Here's a, sto a, a story that is prevalent in our society. Correct me if you think I got this wrong. I did my best and I couldn't do it. Now, most of the time, both parts of that is our, our lies. Most of the time, when, some, when we say I did my best, what it means is, I did as much as I wanted to and I stopped. <laughs> right? We didn't, that's not the same, right? That phrase has come to mean, I did as much as I wanted to and I stopped. And any sentence that begins with, I can't, is a lie because everything is possible. Everything is possible. We align with universal presence and we do our best, our real best, not our pretend best. And some element of the divine does supply the rest. We learn that through these miraculous healings that happen in our healing sessions. We're not doing that. <laughs> we couldn't make those miracles happen. We couldn't. They happen because we do our real best, not our pretend best. We tell the person the scary thing, the thing that they don't want to hear. <laughs> we do it anyway. And the miracles happen. Swishing the back of the future chakra once more, left to right and right to left, pulsing the vortex. Left to right and right to left, pulsing the vortex. Still working with the future chakra. Right now we can gently, gently, does anyone want more time with the back of the future chakra? Just note to self, there's a lot of work to do there. We won't finish it in five minutes, right? But gently bring your hands as if you could touch the outsides of your future chakra, which of course are very difficult because they're many miles, you know, thousands of miles wide. <coughs> but begin <coughs> to straighten them out. <coughs> they're always rotated one way or another, just like the lungs, you know? They're always twisted off to one side or another. So just to gently, gently with love and not cruelty, straighten them up, yes. Let's start to draw light and love. Does anybody need more time to straighten it up so that it's actually facing source, facing front? Start to draw light and love from universal presence straight into the front of the future chakra, <laughs> filling it, whoa, whoa. So full of love, it bulges and expands and exhales out the back in a river of love. Now there's a river of love flowing through us and around us through the future chakra, front to back, <coughs> front to back, <coughs> front to back, 
Again, coughing is just a common reaction to energy shifts. We don't have coughs, we don't have colds, we aren't ill. It's simply a reaction to energy shifting. When there's a big shift, coughs occur. And to suppress the cough, whew, suppresses the shift. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Who notices something happening? Who notices crowns expanding and opening by aligning with the future rephrase by aligning the future chakra with universal presence and drawing light and love through the future the crown expands now as if we're inhaling and then exhale out the back letting that river of love flow through us and around us front to back front to back through us <laughs> and through our lives through us and through our future chakra letting